The county DA yesterday announced that there will be no charges filed against the white police officer who shot Mr. Blake, a black man in August. The DA said that any case against the officer would be hard to prove because Jacob Blake had a knife and the officer could reasonably claim self-defense. All right, so we are joined now by Ben Crump, who is the attorney for Jacob Blake's family. Thank you so much for joining us, um, sir. Uh, before I get into what we heard um, from the district attorney, I want to ask you, have you spoken to Mr. Blake? How is he doing? Uh, yes, I have spoken to Jacob. Um, he's with his children. Obviously, um, it was disturbing the decision of the district attorney. But Jacob is focused on uh, trying to walk again. He's always been positive. He's always said that he's going to walk again, despite uh, what the doctors have opined, that he would never walk again. Um, well, I th that is admirable, and I know he has a lot of work ahead of him. Um, you know, it, when you think about this announcement, um, the district attorney essentially said that the, he didn't think they could prove the case here. What is the next step then for for Jacob and you all after this announcement? Well, and Marie, we are going to file a uh, civil rights excessive use of force 1983 uh, civil rights lawsuit against the Kenosha Police Department and also the Department of Justice and the new administration under Biden-Harris will be looking into this matter because it is asinine when you look at that video for the district attorney to claim that a young black man moving away from the police, doing everything in his power to get away from them, never posed a threat to them, never launched at them, never pointed a knife at them or anything like that. But yet, you see him as a threat, and you shoot him seven times in the back, point-blank range, having deliberate indifference as to whether he lives or dies, because that's the only thing you can conclude when you shoot a person seven times in the back, point-blank range, in front of his three young children, his five, three-year-old, five-year-old, and eight-year-old uh, sons, who are going to be traumatized for life watching their father be paralyzed by the police. And when you just oppose that with Kyle Wittenhouse, this young white man who shot three people, killing two of them, and then putting a assault weapon around his neck and walking towards the police. So they don't see the young white man who just killed people with a gun walking towards them as a threat, but yet you see a young black man who's running away from you as a threat, it emphasizes that there are two justice systems in America, one for black America and one for white America. I want to ask you about this business of Mr. Blake having a knife. Now, the officers involved, they were not wearing cameras. So the video that we're seeing, that many of us have seen, uh, came from a bystander, just sort of shooting from a distance on the phone. Um, what, does, what is your take on the assertion that Mr. Blake was holding a knife before he was shot? How do you respond to that? It's real simple. It is their attempt to justify the unjustifiable excessive use of force by police. Um, Mr. Blake never, ever put them in harm's way. He was never an intimate threat to them. When you think about the elements that must be proved for self-defense, you have to prove that you were uh, an intimate threat of bodily harm. And this police officer would have to establish that he was in fear of his life. But it becomes illogical when you think about the fact, if you're in fear of your life, then why are you going to continue to chase somebody? Why don't you just step back with your fellow officers, set up a perimeter, and make sure you're out of harm's way? Why do you have to shoot a unarmed black man seven times in the back to try to say that we could have used least intrusive measures to respond in this matter. But with black people, it always seems to be, and we saw this play out in 2020 like never before, you shoot first, 
and you ask questions later. We're now dealing with Andre Hill case in Columbus, Ohio. Black man holding the cell phone. They said they were in fear of their life. We saw what happened with well, Ahmaud Arbery, who was lynched for jogging while black in February 13, 2020. Obviously, we know March 13, 2020, Breonna Taylor, after they broke in her house at 1 in the morning, executing an illegal, unnecessary no not want, they felt the need to shoot her as well. I mean, and you just have case after case, Anne Marie, where unarmed black people are shot by the police, and then they say, oh, we felt fear for our life, but a white boy with a gun walking towards you, you don't feel fear. It's just asinine, and we have to address the elephant in the room. And, and Mr. Crumb, Jacob Blake also was not charged with anything, correct? Do you, how do you, what do you make of that? Is this sort of a, a tacit admission of some sort of wrongdoing on the part of the police? Because he, according to them, at least, there's, there's no chargeable offense here. Yeah, I, I think it's their way of trying to, uh, I guess, make Jacob Blake's family think that, well, we're not going to charge him either. If you thought Jacob Blake committed a crime, you should have charged him. You, you should have took it to a grand jury, just like we believe this officer met the elements of attempted murder charge, and that should have been to the grand jury. But this district attorney took it away from the people, denied Jacob Blake his due process of the law, denied Jacob Blake of ever having his day in court. Because what black people and, and minorities want in America, we don't want anything extra. All we want is what equal justice uh, suggests, and that is, if we commit crimes, we are always arrested, even if there's very little evidence. But when people commit crimes against us, especially white police officers, it seems to be a double standard. And we have to have transparency plus accountability to get the trust. Right now, as uh, Vice President Kamala Harris and all of us talk frequently about these criminal justice matters. We have to bridge this divide of mistrust between communities of color and law enforcement. And with what happened in the Jacob Blake decision yesterday, that does nothing to help this issue of mistrust. So, as I understand it, part of the reason that it's taken so long to, to come to this conclusion, I think it's been five months or so, is because uh, they had already put in place, essentially, a, an investigative procedure when things like this happen because of, you know, an incident that happened 16 years ago, that they, that they this was their attempt at reform, right? Um, so I want to ask you, you know, you have been calling over and over again for systemic changes. We, we've seen you far too often, I think, quite frankly, Mr. Crumb, even though I like you. We see you a lot uh, calling for the same thing over and over again in different cities, different places. Just what is it going to take? This is supposed, what, what we're seeing right here in Kenosha is a police department and, and a justice system that actually had put in changes that they thought were going to ensure um, a, 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 fair, a fair procedure and justice. Anne-Marie, what it's going to take is for us to apply the system as it is instituted and not to have these exceptions for white police officers to have extrajudicial killings of black citizens. Uh, as I talk to young people at, in law schools and universities across America, I, I always go back to them and say, we have known for years, when we look at Martin Luther King's letter from the Birmingham jail, that they are going to continue to try to say things are legal. but. As Dr. King said, just because they say it's legal, that does not make it right. He said that everything that Hitler did to the Jews in Germany, they said was legal. Slavery was legal. That didn't make it right. Segregation was legal. That didn't make it right. And when they try to tell us it's legal, what they did to Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin, what they did to Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky, what they did to uh, 
uh, Tamir Rice in Cleveland, Ohio, Trayvon Martin, they're going to tell us it was legal. But as Dr. King said, that does not make it right. And so what we have to do is have equal justice under the law. We have to make America live up to it idea that they uh, proclaimed in the Declaration of Independence, that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created mm -hmm. equally, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that amongst them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, America, that means black people, too. Um, you know, Congresswoman Ayanna Pressley tweeted uh, yesterday, um, that a system created out of white supremacy cannot be reformed. Um, I'm wondering if you think that th these sorts of reforms can occur um, <coughs> simply through the criminal justice system, that if, if, if perhaps this is much bigger than that, and if we're going to see sort of any sort of true change, um, an attorney like you, as passionate as you are, is not going to be enough. Right. Uh, Thurgood Marshall is my personal hero. He's my North Star. And Thurgood Marshall was often quoted as saying, even though they did not write the Constitution for us, we're going to make it ours anyway. Because remember, we were three-fifths of a citizen when they uh, uh, signed the Constitution. However, when you think about what happened in Georgia, the fact that uh, we elected two Democrats to give the Democrats control of the Senate with the African-American vote, we have the Democrats get control of the House and the White House. So I am optimistic as ever that we can have a more just America, where if we just keep working with allies, and we continue to try to say, America, we can do better. We can have a more just society where uh, George Floyd gets an opportunity to take a breath, even though an officer has his knee on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds, and that officer is held accountable. We can be a more just America if Brianna gets the opportunity to sleep in peace without them busting into our doors at one in the morning where African Americans and minorities are disproportionately uh, affected by these no-not warrants. Our white brothers and sisters don't have to worry about them busting in their door with guns. And if Ahmaud Arbery can run free and not be lynched for jogging while black in 2020, yeah. We can have a more just America. We only have to do what our brothers and sisters did in Georgia and act. We cannot stand idly by. Our children's very lives depend on it. That's why we have to do something. We have more now than our grandparents had back then. And so we have no excuse for being able to fix this broken, discriminatory system that targets young people of color, especially young men of color. America, we have to do better. Uh, you know, before I let you go, you painted a very sort of uh, a good, uh, interesting picture to remind us of the two videos of um, Mr. Blake and Mr. Rittenhouse, both videos shot on, you know, sort of some phones and, and, and cameras and 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 Kyle Rittenhouse walking through the streets of Kenosha w with a firearm um, and at times sort of being um, almost like greeted by some of the uh, members of the police, or I don't know if it's police, but other members, people, individuals who were there to, to, to keep the peace. Um, I'm wondering if uh, your feeling about how the criminal justice system treats those people, people like Kyle Rittenhouse. We know in Washington, D.C. now there's an expectation that there are going to be major protests. They've already started. Um, there are groups there that have been called, you know, white supremacist groups by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Um, you know, what's your take on, on how individuals like that are being treated by the criminal justice system? You know, Anne-Marie, I represent Mr. Antoine Milko, who his homeowners association said that him flying a Black Lives Matter flag in front of his house was offensive 
and a nuisance when they had several Blue Lives Matter flags and several uh, Trump country flags and Make America Great flags. And it just opposes this way that law enforcement treats people who stand up, who have been historically marginalized and declare their rights and their constitutional rights as citizens. Like, for instance, the white nationalists who went to the Michigan State House, nobody was pepper sprayed. Nobody was tear gassed and nobody was arrested, even though they went there with assault weapons. Now, when Black Lives Matter activists, these young people who are doing what the late great Congressman John Lewis said, getting into good trouble, they are oftentimes pepper sprayed and tear gassed. And many of them are arrested, Anne Marie. But you know why I know we're going to win this fight? Because no matter what they do, the young people keep showing up. The young people keep saying that we know the difference between right and wrong. We know our constitutional rights. And we will assert our constitutional rights despite how you respond to us. And what that tells me, Ann, is that these young people will be running American society and the future is bright despite these challenges and obstacles that we sometimes run into like Jacob Blake Jr., like Breonna Taylor. We had these battles before with Emmett Till and uh, so many others, but we continue to overcome. And with these young people, I, I just have all the confidence in the world that we're going to make a more mm -hmm. just America, a better world for our children. Uh, well, I hope so. Uh, Attorney Ben Crump, thank you so much. Um, thanks for joining us this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you.